Assalamualaikum. Uh, today we will be, we will be discussing uh, uh, the technique of share valuation uh, using the using the residual income model approach. Okay. Uh, if you remember very well, uh, last semester uh, we talked about uh, share valuation and the concept is very much similar. So you calculate, uh, you calculate the intrinsic value of the stock and you compare it against the market price. If the intrinsic value of the stock is uh, higher than the market price, the stock is overvalued and Sorry, the stock is uh, undervalued and we recommend to buy. On the other hand, if the intrinsic value of the stock is uh, lower than the market price, the stock is overvalued and uh, we recommend not to buy the stock. So the basic concept of share valuation is very much similar, but uh, this uh, residual income model approach is another a technique of uh, calculating the uh, the intrinsic value of the stock. Okay, let us begin with the question uh, December 2019, question 5. Okay, uh, so uh, you read the question and you pick up uh, all the important points, important information there. So, uh, in January 1st, 2019, the stock of City Mall Corporation is trading at 1760 per share. So that 1760 is uh, the market price of the stock. Uh, it's, uh, it's written here in your answer scheme. Yeah. The one that I have uh, sent through WhatsApp. Okay. You are recommended by your investment agent to buy the company stock. So our decision whether uh, we want to buy the stock or not depending on the intrinsic value of the stock. If the intrinsic value of the stock is higher than the market price, in this case the market price is 1760, so we recommend to buy. On the other hand, on the other hand, if the if the intrinsic value of the stock is lower than the market price of 1760, we don't recommend to buy. Okay. Um, you are recommended by your investment agent to buy the company stock. The information below was extracted from City Mall Corporation's financial statements as at 31st December 2018. Okay, uh, total assets of 4.5 million, total liabilities 180,000, and preferred stock uh, is uh, 400,000. And uh, other information, number of common stock outstanding 260,000. Uh, earnings available to common shareholders, 800,000. So this is uh, a net income. Okay, uh, we use the term. We usually use the term net income, the income of 800,000, and the expected growth rate for uh, the net income is 8%, 12%, 15%, and 18% uh, respectively for the next four years. And dividend payout ratio is maintained at 40%. And the cost of equity is uh, the, uh, the cost of equity is also called uh, your required rate of return is twelve percent. So using the residual re income model, determine the intrinsic value per share as of January first, twenty nineteen. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, when you look at the answer scheme here, sure, and you look at the answer scheme here, all this information. Actually, we start with blank, uh, blank uh, piece of paper here. Okay, uh, so it starts with zero here, nothing, nothing here, and then we work it uh, through the processes one by one. So uh, this is actually a finished product, but uh, uh, at the very beginning, we have no nothing here. The figures are uh, uh, this is a blank piece of paper here. Okay. So, uh, let us go to uh, the answer scheme line by line. Yeah? You go, we go to the answer scheme uh, according to uh, rows, uh, each row. Okay? So, the first row is 
um, the first row is earnings per share. Okay, earnings per share is uh, net income. Uh, the formula for earnings per share is net income uh, divided by number of shares outstanding. Okay, uh, if you uh, look at the uh, page two of the answer scheme, yeah. Uh, page two of the answer scheme here. Page two of the answer scheme. Um, the net income uh, started with uh, eight hundred thousand in twenty eighteen, but it grows. The net income grows um, uh, according to the percentages given to you. Eight percent in twenty nineteen, twelve percent in twenty twenty, fifteen percent in twenty twenty one, and eighteen percent in twenty twenty. 2022. So we calculate the net income for each uh, for each particular year according to its growth rate. So we have uh, uh, for 2019, uh, the net income has grown from 800,000 to 864,000, followed by uh, 2020 from 864,000 to 967,680, and then. Uh, in 2021, 1,112,832 1, and in 2022, 1,313,141.76. Okay, uh, as I mentioned just now, to get the earnings per share for uh, every year, for each year, you, uh, you divide it, uh, the net income uh, div divided by the number of uh, common shares outstanding. So, as shown here, uh, earnings per share uh, for 2018 is 3.0769, 3.0769, and uh, 3.3231, and so on, etc. So, you put all these figures um, into uh, row 1 of your answer scheme. So, row 1 of your answer scheme. Uh, uh, we have earnings per share for each year starting from 2018 up to 2022. Okay. Okay, then, then let's go to the second row. Okay, S the second row uh, uh, is a, a dividend per share. Okay, uh, to calculate the dividend per share, you are given the information that a dividend payout ratio is 40%. So, if you look at the first row, earnings per share for, uh, for each year, then um, uh, to get the dividend per share, is you multiply earnings per share for each year, multiplied by uh, 40% or 0 0.4, uh, as shown in the uh, answer scheme here. Okay, as shown in the answer scheme here. Uh, this is the calculations of uh, dividend per share. So, dividend per share is earnings per share multiplied by um, dividend payout ratio of 40%. So, you have a figure of uh, dividend per share for every year starting from 2018 up to 2022. So, that's how we get uh, the figures in for the second row. Okay. Uh, I think for the first and second row, uh, the answer is uh, is very uh, straightforward. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the third row. The third row is uh, book value per share. Okay, the formula for book value per share is a common equity divided by number of shares outstanding. Uh, this is a bit tricky. Okay, uh, uh, how do we get this uh, common equity, uh, common equity figure? Okay, we uh, look at the page three of your answer scheme. Page three of your answer scheme. Okay, uh, you are given the information about the total assets, total liabilities, and equity. Okay, uh, let me uh, clarify to you. Okay, total assets is 4,500,000. Total liabilities is 180,000. 
So, to solve for equity, as we know, uh, total assets is equal to total liabilities plus equity. So, to solve for equity, uh, we can get the equity of uh, total assets minus total liabilities. So that's uh, equity is 4,500,000 multiplied by uh, minus, minus 180,000. You get 4,320,000. Okay, uh, let me clarify this. This 4,320,000 includes a preferred stock. Okay, uh, because preferred stock is also considered as an equity. But uh, to get common equity, you have to deduct uh, the preferred stock from the uh, common equity uh, from the equity value. So here we have equity of four million three hundred twenty thousand, and to get common equity, uh, we have to deduct preferred stock. That's how we get uh, four million three hundred twenty thousand minus four hundred thousand of preferred stock. Uh, this four hundred thousand is given in the in the question. So you have a common equity of. 3,920,000 Okay, in order to get the book value per share the formula is common equity divided by a number of common stocks outstanding Okay, so uh, common equity uh, for 2019 uh, uh, common equity is 3,920,000 divided by uh, common stocks of 260,000 uh, you get a book value per share of 15 ringgit 07 uh, 15.0769 uh, similarly uh, you repeat the same process for the year of 2020 2021 2020 and 2022 so that's how we uh, get the uh, book value per share. So that's how we solve uh, uh, row number three uh, in the answer scheme. Yeah. So row number three in the answer scheme here, book value per share. Okay. So now the next step is uh, you multiply uh, row three multiplied by 0 0.12. 0 0.12 is uh, is the required rate of return or is the cost of uh, capital. So, uh, for example, in 2019, in 2019, uh, you get 15.15 uh, 15, here, here, in the, in the, in the other scheme, uh, we have here uh, On page four, yeah, on page four of the answer scheme, uh, the the calculation is is shown here. On page four of the answer scheme, uh, you multiply the book value that you have calculated, multiply with a twelve percent. Twelve percent is the cost of capital or the required rate of return. So for each year. You multiply the book value, book, the beginning book value, multiplied by the required rate, required rate of return, and you get uh, the answer for row four. Row four is um, uh, that's uh, there's no specific name for row four, but it's just a book beginning book value multiplied by uh, by required rate of return. Okay, uh, next is row five. Row five is a residual income. Okay. What is the meaning of residual? Uh, residual in in a simple in a simple uh, 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 term is a balance, lebihan, eh? residual. So uh, let's say if you have a, a profit of ten million, you pay a dividend of six million. So that four million is a residual, lebihan, eh? lebihan balance okay uh, to get the residual income uh, you use this uh, uh, formula yeah. 
uh, uh, this is how we solve uh, row 5. Uh, row 5. Mm, earnings per share minus row 4. Uh, 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 you can say that to get the residual income, uh, you subtract. You subtract row one. Uh, for example, in twenty nineteen, row one is three point three two three one. Okay, row one minus uh, minus row four. So, uh, if you look at row row one minus row four, uh, row one minus row four, you get the uh, uh, residual income. Row one minus row four. Is it right? 3.3231 minus 1.8092. Yeah. Row 1 minus row 4, you get row 5. Okay. And uh, for row 6, row 6, we got the answer scheme on page, uh, on page 4. Okay, answer scheme. Page 4 of your answer scheme. Um, you multiply the residual income, yeah, uh, the, the figures from row 5 of our answer scheme, multiply with the uh, PVIF or interest factor of each year. 12% 1, 12% 2, 12% 3, 12% 4. Uh, like here, as shown here, for, to get the present value of residual income that is in row 6, you multiply uh, residual income with the uh, interest factor, PVIF. PVIF 12%, 1%, 12%, 2%, 12%, and so on. So that's how you get uh, row 6. Okay, uh, the last part is to get the intrinsic value of the stock, you add the beginning book value plus the summation of uh, the summation of uh, present value of residual income that we have uh, from row 6. So, uh, the beginning book value is 15.076 plus 5.4741. 5.4741 is the summation of uh, residual income uh, running from 2019 to 2022. Okay, so when you add up these two figures, uh, beginning book, val uh, book value per share plus uh, the present value of uh, plus the summation of present value of residual income, you get the intrinsic value of 20.55. Okay, so now we go back to the very basic idea. So if now we have the present value, or, or no, sorry, now we have the intrinsic value of 20.55, we compare it against the market price of uh, market price of 17.6. So, since in this case, the intrinsic value is higher than the uh, market price, 20.55 against 17.60, so the stock is uh, undervalued because uh, intrinsic value is higher than the market price. So, we recommend to buy. Until uh, we see you again, uh, take care and study hard and... Uh, Anga is sleeping. Okay, Anga. Hi, Anga. Sleeping. Bye-bye.